let's jump into Invincible. What do you say? Do it. All right, guys. I have to watch this show, which Con- I don't think convinces so, me. So, so let's talk. Let's talk. It, it is an uh, animated show on Amazon Prime. It's actually based on a comic from Robert Kirkman. You'll okay. know Robert Kirkman as the creator of the uh, Walking Dead franchise. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, just like the Walking Dead, this particular uh, show started as a uh, comic and then gained a loyal audience. And now they've made it into a show on Amazon Prime with some amazing voice actors. Yes. Um, and and it hooks you in right away. So it, it's comparative to The Boys, which is also on Amazon Prime, where we have superheroes that are not the clear, clean cut, you know, superheroes that we're used to, say, in, in, in the DC space. And I specifically say DC because so many of the superheroes in this cartoon and in the comic are modeled after specific characters in the dc universe but what is invincible about Uh, the main character is a teenager mark grayson kind of kind of playing that spider-man role if you will right he does not have any powers in the beginning of the show and i'm going to talk specifically about the show because i did not read the comic same but his father but his father is known as omni man the most powerful being on planet earth he came to this planet just like Superman did from a, uh, from a planet called uh, Viltrum. And I'm probably going to mispronounce that. So if there's anybody out there and they're, you know, yelling out the correct name or the correct it's pronunciation. It's Viltrium. Uh, there no, you go. No, I'm there you go. No, it's but, not that. But he, I gotcha. He comes here and he is, he is on a mission to protect planet Earth. That's why he's here. They are a very benevolent uh, society. They are born with these amazing and great powers, and they come to planet Earth. It, he has been assigned planet Earth to protect and save and help. Planet Earth, very much like all of our comic, bro- comic book universes, are filled with these big monsters, uh, threats you know, from, from, from outer space, etc., and this guy is going to protect us. Uh, working, I wouldn't say working with Omni-Man, but uh, another uh, group of superheroes very much like the Justice League, are the Guardians of the Globe. And I believe there's five, six, possibly seven of them, and they're all modeled after our Justice League. We have a guy who's a Superman. We have a woman who's a Wonder Woman. We have a guy who has powers with the C, we right? Have this guy, guy dark, who has Darkwing, speed. who looks like Batman, yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, and, and they work together. They, they have, they, 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 they help each other out. Guardians of the globe, they'll work for a specific organization, a government organization, whereas Omni-Man is kind of a freelancer, but clearly he's the most powerful. Now, something happens in the first episode, possibly the second that really changes things. One is we find out that Omni-Man without giving anything away is not exactly who he thought he was going to be, okay? He, he, uh, he turns out to be a little darker than we thought, which is, which is you know, a, a, a massive point now for the rest of the series. Mark Grayson, the son, his son, who in the beginning of the show has no powers, begins to develop these powers. So we find out that on this planet of uh, Viltrum, the, the, the kids sometimes are born without powers, but they develop them later on. And certainly it takes Mark a little longer because he is part human. Yeah. But now he, has, he is developing his powers, and it is all of the things that now he has to go through, a la Spider-Man, to learn and understand the responsibility of his powers. Over the course of the episodes... The thing that we learned about Omni-Man comes into play very heavily. Mark learning how to navigate his world with these powers comes into play very heavily. And the season finale does a great job of bringing all of that together. Now, this show, just like the boys, is super graphic. Oh, yeah, that's because I wanted to ta- I wanted to mention that, especially if you didn't bring it up. I was like, Manny, if you like characters 
getting their head chopped off and eyes exploding out of fucking heads <laughs> then this is right up your alley like yeah. people people like laughing off blood being splattered on their body like and it's like way over the top and some of it's hilarious but yes. it's also like really well done and accurate so it's like gruesome some and, of it is monster of the week yeah uh, but there is always the underlying story and and there's a lot of humor in it there is a ton of humor in it uh, the Guardians of the Globe, uh, some of the characters that we learn that are later on established as additional members of Guardians of the Globe, they're just friggin' hilarious. There's, there's great stories there. There is some really deep, crazy shit that after you watch the episode, you sit back and go, what the fuck? What did I just see? Uh, the wow. episodes run about 45 minutes long, so they're yeah. a little bit longer than, than the norm, but that's great because there is so much shit to watch. Now, I've never necessarily ne needed uh, the voice uh, the voice actors to be you know people we know or great voice actors, but in this case, they add immensely to the show. You've got uh, Stephen Yoon, who is um, you know Walking Dead, but now has been uh, doing some some uh, some recent films. Uh, he was nominated for an Academy Award. Yeah. We have, of course, uh, the great J.K. Simmons playing uh, Omni Man. Yep. Who's absolutely fucking amazing in that role? Yeah, he's uh, great. Zachary Quinto. Uh, we Wh got which one's Quint? Who does Quinto play? Zachary Quinto plays robot. Oh man, that is one of the most interesting characters on yes. the show. Yes. You, just when you think you know robot, you're just like, oh, yep. Oh. Yep. So, so if you're a fan, if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, if you ever watched any of those seasons, you know that. And I'm not giving anything away here that there are characters that you come to know and love who don't always go down the path or meet the destiny that you expect them to meet. The heroes are the heroes are supposed to live. The villains are supposed to die. Good things happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people. That's not how this particular show works. It's very much in the same vein. Yeah. So beyond the the twists and turns in the story, which again, we're not going to say what it is. It's what's going to happen to this character. Are they going to make it through this episode? Are they going to make it through this series? And sometimes that answer is no. And it's fucking shocking, but it is so well done that it leaves you wanting more. And it's, it's just a great fucking animated. It's a fucking cartoon. Yeah, so it's, it's, they can do it, things on it that you can't do on a regular show. And then, did I hear Mahershala's voice as well? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, th I thought so. And I was like, damn, like, so, Manny, you can just see that there's a ton of great actors um, and Mark great, Hamill's in it. Great story. Yeah, Mark Hamill's in it. Great storytelling. A, yes. a, lot, a lot of different storylines, too. So, it, and and I haven't got to the finale yet, so I'm very excited about that. But it, yeah. It's a it's a good watch, and you know you can you can pick up your phone too and just browse for like five minutes and not in and still be entertained. It, it's because it's hard for anybody to put their phone down nowadays. The the, the twist that you're referring to, uh, Brandon, is one that in the comic, it's my understanding, didn't come until a few, until a few episodes in. So so mm -hmm. that's why it took the comic a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to remember when Kirkman wrote this, it was actually prior to The Walking Dead. So at that time, there wasn't, you know, the heroes were heroes and the villains were villains, and that was it. Uh, and 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 this uh, these characters you know, this are particular deep. twist, yes, they, they they that was a very different, and that that got people in, into this. Luckily, this this show does this right away within the first episode or two, and so immediately you're just you're hooked. You want to see what's going on. You want to see what this is about. And uh, it, it's it's a quick uh, watch. It's eight episodes, eight episodes on Amazon Prime. Yeah, it, it's it's good. So Manny, um, did we do a good job? <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna watch it, or is it your? I, like... I am. I am. I, I definitely. No, am. I, know, I know. You know, and and I tried. I really did. When I got home earlier, I really did try to uh, go ahead and watch the first one. So at least it's done before we went on tonight. Uh, but I was like thinking it was going to be like a half hour episode and the first one's like 48 minutes. So yeah. Now I don't have 48 minutes to spare right now. <laughs> give give, you, give yourself time. And then, and then let's see, we want to know what your uh, thoughts are on the, on our next episode. 
uh, when I'm sure you'll ha you'll have finished the entire show by then. Yeah, I think I think you know what. Uh, as soon as we're done recording tonight, I think I'll go ahead and watch the first episode. Awesome, excellent. So that, that's my that, that's my push. That's my push for for uh, Invincible. All right, love it. Um, I, I think we're safe to move on to Falcon and Winter Soldier. <laughs> sure. So we go from superb storytelling and in Invincible uh, to do we have to, to absolute to, fucking me garbage. to mediocre storytelling <laughs> with 